What is the emotion manufacturing and distribution industry? <laughs> what is that? Uh, that's uh, the entertainment business. That's what, uh, that's what we're doing. That's, uh, we're not chasing trends, we're not making trends, we're not doing all those things that uh, executives and critics and people would like us to think we're doing. Uh, we are trying to make people feel something, whether it's movies, television, anything. That's the goal. You're not educating people. You may do those things in addition to moving people, but your job as a screenwriter, and the screenwriters are the first filmmakers, your job is to make people feel something. So you're in the emotion manufacturing business and, dis and the distribution of that emotion. That's what we do. That's our job. So when people think of uh, Hollywood, uh, we think of glamour and, and action, but really it's almost about, it's like a puppet. We're having our strings pulled? Absolutely. I mean, that's the contract. The contract we make with the audience is they pay us money in the form of a box office ticket or in the form of a paying their cable bill or their streaming uh, app bill. And in return, we make them feel something. That's our contract with them. They don't even necessarily know it. If you ask them, they probably wouldn't necessarily describe it, the audience that way, but it is that. It could be laughter, it could be tears, it could be being scared, it could be having your pulse racing with excitement, it could be getting turned on, but it's something that makes them feel something. That's the relationship uh, between the, the filmmaker, the screenwriter, and the audience. What's the difference between expressing emotion and evoking emotion? Uh, the difference between expressing and evoking emotion is radically uh, different and incredibly important to, for the screenwriter to identify any kind of writer. Um, <clears throat> we've all been, you know, told and we have a, in society now there's sort of a, a sense of we're all supposed to be expressing ourselves. And that's great. It's a wonderful thing to do. But I don't want to see your therapy session and you don't want to see mine. And I certainly don't want to pay to see your therapy session. So. Um, our job is not to just express ourselves. If you just want to, um, if, you, if you write down your innermost thoughts and feelings on a piece of paper, that's therapy. But if you do it in such a way so that someone else can read it and feel what you feel, that's art. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. That part of the process gets forgotten a lot, especially now, when it seems like just expressing emotion should be enough. No, it's not. If the audience didn't feel it, it doesn't matter. The audience is the completion of the arc in any art form, but especially a popular art form like movies. Uh, until an audience feels it and responds to it, you haven't completed your task. Uh, and they will leave the theater frustrated if they haven't had that, uh, that experience. Uh, our job is to make them feel something, not for us to express what we feel. In order to make them feel something, yes, very often you do have to tap into something that uh, you feel deeply and get it on the screen. When I write television, I'm doing the same thing. I just not necessarily, uh, I may be using someone else's characters or someone else's scenario, but I have to find something in that story that, that I can uh, feel strongly about and then try to get that on the screen. But my job is to communicate it to the audience, not just to feel it, not just to express it. Is that why uh, people often say don't do narration, o o like an opening with a narration, uh, or that's totally different? Um, I don't, it, 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 there, is, there is some relationship uh, in the sense of uh, any kind of voiceover narration <clears throat> instinctively distances the audience from the story you're telling, but sometimes that's good. Um, some of the greatest movies ever made have voiceover narration as a part of them because it, it does distance the audience and tells the audience they're about to see something that's perhaps more important than they would have realized. I'm thinking about the opening of Network, for example, uh, which has a, 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 an omniscient narrator uh, at the beginning and at the end and occasionally throughout the story. And it works very effectively because uh, we, it's a satire and it was important that we occasionally step back and hear in essence, the voice of God telling us something important is happening here. But if it's a crutch, if, if it's used as a crutch to just explain stuff that the uh, screenwriters and the directors weren't good enough to get on camera, then it usually is uh, something to be avoided. But 
almost every Billy Wilder movie has voiceover of some sort. It's, it's, a, it's a very useful tool and it can be very effective. So I don't know that it's that directly uh, related. Why do you encourage writers to feel it, write it, and then analyze it? Um, <clears throat> it's among the most <laughs> crucial parts of my te teaching technique and my philosophy of screenwriting. Most screenwriting books uh, and teachers are teaching you backwards. They're teaching you to analyze all these successful films. They all have these things in common. Now, if you go back and plug in, you do the exact same formula and just plug in your characters, you'll have a success too, and it absolutely does not work that way. Because of what I, because of, um, because the film is, uh, its purpose is to make the audience feel something, it's important that you start with your right brain, I'm being very simplistic now psychologically, but the right brain is roughly responsible for the emotional intelligence of, of, our, of our personalities. The left brain is the rational part. They're telling you to start with the left brain, which is say, analyze it, then write it, and maybe you'll feel it in there somewhere. That's incorrect, in my opinion. That you need to start with, by feeling it, feeling the passion of it, try to get that onto the page, and then after you have, then go back and analyze it. And of course, that last step of analyzing it is critical to make sure that the audience is gonna get what you intended. It isn't just first blurt. You're not just putting something on the page. You then, you then analyze it uh, and reanalyze it and re-reanalyze it to make sure it's doing what you wanna do. But first, you have to feel it. Um, it's, uh, it's what I call organic screenwriting as opposed to uh, the more formulaic screenwriting. Uh, theories, which most screenwriting uh, books and teachers uh, tend to uh, tend to to promote, um, that's it's the difference between something that's well structured and just something that's written to a formula. I do a lot of screenwriting consulting, have for years, with some success. Uh, a lot of my uh, clients have gone on and had their films made, and uh, that's often what I find myself doing is trying to strip away all that. Uh, analysis that they've been taught that by by page so-and-so I have to be here by page so-and-so I have to be here strip that away get back to what what is your what are you passionate about what did you why did you write this story to begin with what are you excited about and then uh, get that on the page or get that at least the process started and then go back and analyze and see is there a better way we could do it should that be moved from here to there and all the other uh, decisions that go into properly structuring a screenplay. But if you don't feel it first, you're pretty much doomed. And so how can we reconcile in ourselves the, the right brain, but not letting us kind of become unhinged, you know, where we're kind of, we've got a bottle of whatever and we're just gonna pour it all out, but then we find out it's a big jumbled mess. Yeah, somebody once said, and I thought it was a smart thing, the rules of screenwriting are for when the script doesn't work. So that, you know, if, if you go, I mean, you shouldn't have to give it to someone for them to tell you, this is completely meaningless to me. I don't get it at all. Uh, it's really our job to having written to go back and then start shaping it in a more refined way. And as one gets more practice at it, uh, you instinctively start to avoid some of the potholes and you sense, oh, this is going on too long or whatever. But, but first it's important to get it down. Um, it's also a test uh, for younger writers who uh, are used to writing in, in, in a medium on a device that allows them to just blurt everything out. And it looks like a script. It's in Final Draft. It looks like a script, so it, it must be good. Well, it's not good. Uh, you have to force yourself to go back and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite and refine it. Put it away, take, pick it up, look at it again. Uh, this is all presupposing, of course, that, the, that the, before you start writing dialogue and scenes, first it has to be properly structured. So that first, uh, most of the projects that, whether it's in movies or television, most of our time is spent in structuring the story properly, not just blurting out dialogue. The dialogue is the easy part. Um, so once it's properly structured, then you're usually not gonna go too far afield. But, the, but even that, 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 that theory of Writing from passion applies to the structuring of the story as well. You want to you want to picture it in your head and, and get the thing structured in a way that is that in which the passion of your 
idea first and foremost comes through. That's the, that's the most important thing. Without that, you're just writing another screenplay that will disappear with all the thousands and thousands of other mediocre screenplays.